Hello, everybody, and welcome in to another episode of the Couch GM's podcast. It is Friday, December 22nd, 2023. I'm your host, George Kirk, joined by the one and only Cody Roadcap. Cody, how are you feeling here this week? Uh, doing better. Uh, I moved in from DNP to limited participant, officially designated as questionable for Sunday. That's good. I'm happy to have you back. Um, but there's also Saturday this week. There's also Monday this week. This week is going to be very difficult with the holiday coming around. You have two games Saturday, three games Monday, trying to figure out injuries. If you have guys in the late window or in the Monday games that have, we'll, we'll do our best to try to help you navigate through how to survive this week and get to your league finals as you're in the semifinals. Congratulations. Or however, wherever you are in your leagues, you should better be in the semifinals. Otherwise, as Cody says, you don't play fantasy, right? Um, but as a reminder, everybody, new episodes every Friday during the season, Cody typically does a bonus episode to talk about the couch GM's world cup earlier in the week, but with him being on the injury report, he had not gotten a chance to do that yet. So we'll give you a little bit of a world cup update before we get too deep into this episode. You can find more info on that and more fantasy football advice on our social medias, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok at the couch GMs. And as always, Send us a DM if there's anything we don't answer on the show or any questions specific to your team. And we will do our best to help you get to those fantasy championships. All right, Cody, why don't we sit back, relax, and chat? As I promised beforehand, why don't we go ahead and actually be fancy and switch over our background and talk a little fantasy uh, Couch GM's World Cup. Cody, why don't you take it away? Alrighty, so just a reminder, the Couch Games World Cup is our 30-team, four-year fantasy football experience where we are finding out who is the best of the best in our group of 30. Uh, we are in the playoffs of year one, and uh, like George mentioned, I typically do a bonus episode each week going over all the matchups. I uh, didn't get to it this week, so I wanted to, one, catch you all up, but two, give you a little preview of what those bonus episodes are. You probably heard us talking about it, but one, it might needed to figure out what it is. Uh, but there's three groups. We'll start in Group A, which is Tyler, who is not with us, his group. And speaking of Tyler, he got a big win, 151.36 to 77.52 over Sean. And then we scroll down here and look at these teams. I'll keep it quick since we have a lot of stuff to get to today. Uh, but Christian McCaffrey stands out to me with almost 40 points. Uh, then Debo Samuel, Jordan Addison, both having two touchdowns, having a nice day. And even on the bench, Jared Goff had more points than Jordan Love, so he could have got even more points there. Where Sean, disappointing day from Devon Achan, had to start Deontay Foreman, who got negative points. Jamar Chase got banged up. ETN, David Montgomery, both less than 10. So just a rough week for Sean there. Anything stick out to you, George, about this matchup? Christian McCaffrey, if he keeps that up, is going to be a league winner. Um, but no, it's nice to see Tyler struggle during the regular season. Six and eight team comes out, puts up 150 in round one. He is proving to be somebody to watch coming into this week. But I know there's a couple of teams that we'll talk about when we talk about next week matchups that are fa heavy favorites in this group. For sure. And then the second matchup is Andrew versus Andrew in the Andrew Bowl. Let's see if I can get this right, because I, I never do. Andrew S. got the victory. Yes, you did, right? <laughs> oh, I only took 16 weeks to remember which <laughs> Andrew is which. Uh, so sorry to Andrew out there for forgetting which one you are. But Andrew S. got the victory, 145.02 to 87.64. Again, not another close matchup this week. and. Kyron Williams, 150 yards on the ground, had 22 points, and that's with two fumbles, so that's impressive. David Njoku, 21 points. James Cook, 35 points. You mentioned Christian McCaffrey. If Cook continues to run the ball like he's been, he'll be a league winner uh, after the up-and-down start he had. Uh, Derrick Henry's poor performance with only three points. A.J. Brown had less than 10 uh, Taysom Hill, only one point. So just a lot of bad performances last week in fantasy. And if you lost your fantasy matchup last week, I'm sure you have a, a similar story of someone not performing. I know in our league of record, um, 
I did get the victory, but it was not, it was a very low scoring game. And I know in my World Cup matchup, which you'll see here in just a second, uh, that I did lose, it was also a very low scoring game. Uh, but before we get into my group, let's just look at the, what is this called? A bracket. I don't know how. It's a bracket. Blanked, yeah. Blanked nice. on the word bracket. Uh, <laughs> But now the teams that had buys, which was Kempi, who was number one seed, and Greg, who was the number two seed. Uh, so last week was the Andrew Bowl. This week is the Tyler Bowl, as Tyler Kempi will take on Tyler Snyder and Andrew T, Andrew S, will, will take on Greg. See, how we the- live another week. Maybe he'll get it week 17. <laughs> Maybe. But George, <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot. Which two teams okay. make the champ- the championship in the this is it chalk is it one and two or do you think these guys have a a legit shot to pull off the upset man if you asked me before week 15 i'm like one and two in the championship in this league i mean greg was the most dominant team in the whole first year of the world cup the most points scored can't be actually passed him to be the one seed which tells you how good he's been doing too just kind of like flying in there right under greg but after seeing snyder tyler here put up uh, 150 and Andrew S put up 145. I'm going to actually say Greg gets a rebound because Greg's team on by actually very bad last week. And I feel like him and I have some parallels. So I'm going to talk this into existence for both of us here. Uh, I think Greg moves on and I'm going to actually say Snyder pulls off an upset. All right. You heard it here first. Check in next week to see how it all breaks down. Let's jump over to my group, which is group B. And I kind of spoiled one matchup, which was mine, uh, which I did lose. Again, I didn't score a lot, got blown out, trend. 83.14 to Reed's 137.90. Real quick look at our teams here. Uh, mine is just basically injuries. If you've been following with the Couch Games World Cup, I was uh, six and two at one point, the highest scoring team. And finished seven. So I went one five the last six weeks of the season. So definitely was on the downwards trend. Did not go into the playoffs with a great start. Brees Hall only two points. AJ Brown less than 10. Jamar Chase got hurt. Brandon Ayuk, poor day. Uh, had to start Kyler Murray because CJ Stroud's hurt. So just a rough performance all around. And then when you have Sam Laporta have three touchdowns, was not a great week for that. Uh, that was a rough Saturday game last week to see. And James Cook going off. Two guys we talked about, Brown's defense had 15. So Reed had overall a great day. He moves on. A little bit closer of a matchup was Hayden versus Marcus. Hayden squeaks by with the victory, 92.66 to 80.88. So both teams scored under 100. Hayden's going to have to pick that up this week if he wants to pull off an upset, get one of those teams on by. And here, really, it came down to Jordan Addison. I mean, because if you look at Aiden's team, nothing, nothing, nothing. Oh, Jordan Addison had 26 points. Basically, it was enough to get him the victory. Uh, Kyron Williams had a nice day at 22 for Marcus, but then everybody else uh, kind of had a downfall. Noah Brown with 18 on the points. Jalen Hurts with 20. That, is that homerism right there? Like, I know it was the flu. I game. feel like that's homerism. Who did Washington play here again? The Rams? Not a fantastic matchup. Now, and Sam uh, got benched halfway through, or well, not halfway through, yeah. two thirds away through the game. So, yeah. Like, I get that Jalen Hurts was doesn't it, dropped a questionable, but like, so hindsight's 20. I also love right? that actually Marcus blamed Jalen Hurts for his loss. Well, he did because he didn't play him. Because that sounds like a play. Marcus problem <laughs> more than a Jalen Hurts. If Jalen Hurts put up the six, I could see it being a Jalen Hurts problem. Yeah, especially when I'm looking at his team right here and I see a guy like Kyle Pitts who he probably hasn't started all year but has been afraid to start. I'm dropping. I'm playing Jalen Hurts. And if I have to pick up Marcus Mariota or Geno Smith or Drew Locke, uh, I would do so. I know yeah. in our, our league of record, this isn't the World Cup, but I have Jalen Hurts, and I dropped both because then Geno Smith and Drew Locke wasn't sure who was going to play. I dropped two players to pick up both of them, so I had three quarterback options for the Monday night game. So he plays 
Uh, He's also rostering Jay- two defenses. I get not playing Buffalo against Dallas. That turns out that would work better for him. But I would rather go out there and play Buffalo and, you know, just roll with it and get the extra quarterback with that spot too. Yeah, so questionable moves by Marcus, but Marcus is definitely a uh, really good fantasy player. So I'm not going to knock him too hard because he beats me a lot and I don't like it. So (laughs) this is why we got to knock and we got to make sure that we uh, stay a peg above, but. It's also part of the whole yeah. trash talk of the deal uh, is fantasy football. And he was the highest scoring team coming into the week and only putting up 80 points. That has to be a rough one. Uh, but Hayden will go on to play Bree. Uh, and then Reed will go on to play Shelby. And I'm going to ask you the same thing here. Tell me who wins. Uh, I think the worst team left of the group is Hayden. So I'm going to say Bree gets the victory that Reed's been coming on strong. Um, but I'm actually going to say it's one, two here. I'm going to pick Shelby. I think the two ladies are going to be in the fa- in the uh, championship game here, which is going to be super cool. We consider that we thought this was going to be the most competitive league. It was a super competitive league, but seeing those two performing as well as they have so far, I hope it continues. Yeah, I, I do think uh, the Reed Shelby matchup might be the closest matchup of all the matchups in week 16 in the couch GMs yeah. World Cup. So Definitely looking forward to that one. And I'm not just saying that because it's my group. Last group real quick here. It's George's group. So I'll let, I won't let him pick the winners this time, but we'll recap week 15 real quick, which was, as you can see, George team. Look at that horrible well. score. I would have put up on by, but he was on by. So it doesn't really matter. This league was definitely more competitive and they all put up decent points, but Jason beat Snyder which is Josh, that Snyder, 159.84 to 134.14. Uh, so he still won by 25 points, but the scores make it feel like this was an intense game. Uh, let's take a real quick look here at the simple box score, breaking it down. Oh, Christian McCaffrey, surprise, surprise. Sam Laporta, surprise, surprise. They were the best players this past week. Debo Samuel, Amra St. Brown. Zamir White did really good in relief for Josh Jacobs. So that was a uh, nice to see if Josh Jacobs can't go this week. Something to keep an eye on. The Browns defense, James Conner, 16 points against the the 49ers. I don't know why I wanted to say the Falcons. Then that was just hurting my brain. Really, it came down to the poor play of Evan Ingram and Garrett Wilson uh, for Josh. But overall, great season for Josh here. Uh, Chris Godwin on the bench, that definitely hurts with his 20 points because uh, the Packers were like, oh, he hasn't caught a ball all season, so we don't need to ever cover him. And he ate their lunch. But uh... I'll say Josh being eliminated here is huge because if you look at it by straight points and performance, Josh was probably third best team in the league, maybe fourth. So Jason kind of snuck his way in there and now made a statement. That was a huge game for him. And I also want to say the McCaffrey and the Debo owners in each of the other two leagues won. Josh got eliminated playing both at the same time. So that's a pretty big hit. For sure. So Christian McCaffrey, in fact, will not be a league winner if he keeps us up for Josh, which is just the fun twist and turns of fantasy football. This last matchup, though, Doug. Another this is another upset. Uh nope. Doug lost 117.88 to 131.30 versus Jim. And if you lock, look at the flow chart, you see right here uh Debo Samuel. I don't know why that tells me this Debo Samuel stuff because he was in the it's last probably matchup, Brock Purdy. Brock if Purdy you scroll probably. on down. It is exactly Brock Purdy. It is Took Brock Purdy. Lead in the four o'clock window and then lost it uh, on Monday night. So that had to, had to sting there. Uh, we see somebody actually playing Jalen hurts and it got the victory. Devonte Adams had a pretty nice day, which we like to see. Imagine winning playing both Raiders receivers. <laughs> Did we really expect the Chargers to do that bad? That's a bold strategy. And I don't know if that has staying power when it comes to him moving on to the championship in this group. Uh, but that really worked right away. And Tyson or uh, Ty Chandler too. 
Um, that one might have staying power. He's one of my favorite league winner potential running backs off the wire lately. But For the sure. two Raiders wide receivers is a little bit bold. And then James Cook didn't quite get it done on uh, – or James Cook – Got it done on the field, but not enough for Doug's team here. Uh, Group have C is the... topsy turvy, man. Uh, T. Higgins on the bench. That one stings definitely. When he when you have Bray Knight, you put up five and you have twenty points on your bench. So tough bow there. But let's real quick look at the bracket. I don't know why I keep forgetting that word. This is the least where... bracket of the bracket though, because we do reseed. Correct. So the. That is a good reminder. We do reseed in the Couch James World Cup. So Brandon gets to play Jim, who was the sixth seed going in, and George will play Waddle, who is the fifth seed. And uh, George, I'm not going to ask you to pick because I won't make you say that you're going to win, even though I do think you're going to win. And I, I, I think this one is the most likely to be chalk of all three Final Fours. I don't know. I think my matchup's the sketchiest. This is where I was actually like, I don't know if I like the fact that it's reseed because I would have rather played Jim. Um, but if I put those words out into the world, maybe Jim will have a good week and I'll be glad I didn't play him. So, all righty. So that is a quick recap of the Couch GMs World Cup. So I will pull it off the screen. We will go back to our traditional podcast background, take the World Cup flag so I like to call it, off the screen. And one more bit of news, which this one is just fun, and we probably shouldn't talk about it because Aaron Rodgers is the master of keeping his name in the media, and I don't mean that as any shade. Everyone knows I'm a big Aaron Rodgers fan. But so Aaron Rodgers won't play this season, but was still activated to the 53-man roster so he can continue to rehab and practice which means he there was a fullback cut for him to be able to be on the 53-man team. And I, have you ever heard of a team activating, activating a player that was hurt that wasn't going to come back this season? Like, I've heard of teams being like, you know what, this guy just needs one more week, so we're going to activate him so he doesn't go on back on IR, but we expect him to be back in a week, maybe two weeks. Yeah. We just open the practice window a little too early. This has to be a first of, yeah, he's not playing, but we want him to be out there practicing. Which, fun I, fact, he's been DP the last two weeks, or last two days. Which is even funnier, when you can say, like, oh, they activated him, but he's not even practicing. And he can still rehab with the team. He just can't be on the practice field for official practices. He can still be in the weight room. He can still be in meetings. He can, But if, if he's on IR, he just can't be on the practice field and in the game. So, yeah, like, I don't... be off to the side with the rehab group. Yeah. Doing stuff with medicine ball and doing drop backs. He just can't be throwing passes to Garrett Wilson during practice. Like And like you can say that this is a move to them to try to get that connection better for next season. You're not worrying about that until the season's over. You're not worrying about that until you have your little get together with your wide receivers in March or April. Tell mini camp, tell OTAs, tell training camp. The scheme can change so much year over year, even if the coaching staff stays the same, because coaches have to keep adapting or these offenses aren't going to be effective because defenses are going to be able to adjust to it. You're going to have all the tape on that. Like, it seems like the dumbest decision I've heard for them to activate Aaron Rodgers and put it out in the world that he's not going to play. He's just going to take up a 53 man roster spot because I would I hadn't thought of this until this moment. Is there a chance that they he has one of those contracts that he gets more money being hurt than he does being healthy and this saves the Jets money in their cap or something? No, there's because he's still not playing. Like he's not like he's still not active on game day. So he's not like meeting game day activation or anything like that. I do have a Reddit conspiracy for you. Uh oh, I'm ready. I love conspiracies like that. Let's go. So a conspiracy I saw slash read on Reddit was i think it was reddit it could have been twitter but we'll just say Reddit because it sounds cooler uh he wanted to be activated or they activated him so he was still uh i don't know if building the hype like of he wanted to be there to be able to practice so practice looked better so they could be like oh look at this team's gonna be next year 
to save Sala and or Hackett's job. Because there's a lot of, you know, question marks about what's going to, is Sala going to make it through this? Is Nathaniel Hackett going to make it through this? And I think a lot of people are really like, well, Aaron Rodgers at this point, if he says he wants Sala and Hackett, they're going to keep Sala and Hackett. Like, like I don't think yeah. they have to do this charades, but it was at least something interesting to say, well, you know, maybe they were like, okay, well, we're going to keep 12, but uh, we need to revamp the offense. So we're bringing in a new, a new group. Like, we had fun with Hackett, Lazard, Randall Cobb, and Rodgers got hurt, and the, that offense was not very good. Surprise, surprise. We saw that in Green Bay last year. But it was just something interesting I saw. Could have just been some random fan that was annoyed. Could have been people just talking about this because we've heard rumblings about uh, part of the reason he wanted to come back was to save to to give them a glimpse of what it could be, save some jobs. So do you think – Sala and or Hackett gets canned at the end of the season. I'll just leave it at that. If Rodgers want them, I think no. Um, I mean, it seemed like Rodgers had the reins coming in when you said, like you said, they signed Lazard. They signed, I want to say even Mercedes Lewis. They signed the ultimate hype man. And they Tim didn't Boyle. get Lewis. You're right. They tried to. Um, but like there and were Lewis so many guys. It was like playing New York, Texas. <laughs> um. But anyway, like there was, he was basically everybody on his wish list. He got, um, and then he got hurt. And you got to imagine this team would have performed better, could have been a playoff team with how well this defense was playing, if Rodgers was on the field. Rodgers didn't even have to be the Aaron Rodgers of old to have this team in the playoffs with how this defense was playing. They were losing games, giving know. up 13, 15 points sometimes. Like Rodgers would have gotten two touchdowns. And there were times where the Jets offense went, uh, what, two and a half games without scoring a touchdown on offense. Like, so you got to imagine that Rogers still has credibility. I don't think that the coaching staff's going to have a turnover because of that. But I think that some of these players that he wants with him may not like Randall Cobb should be gone. Uh, Alan Lazard might be but, gone. But what if he says, I want him? Like, I think I, think I the Ringer put out an article about how much. Aaron Rodgers has control. Like, did Aaron Rodgers say, well, I can come back, prevent them from going to get another quarterback like a Josh Dobbs or even maybe making a move for Kirk Cousins before he got hurt because they were afraid to bring in another quarterback that Aaron Rodgers would have to then supersede. Now, if it was like a Josh Dobbs, I don't think that's a big of an issue. But, like, let's say Kirk Cousins. Like, if yeah. they would have went and got Kirk Cousins and they were going to make the playoffs, and let's say – Rodgers couldn't even come back to the AFC championship game. Would they have made that move? Or did, because he's like, I'm going to come back. Does that prevent them from doing better? So like the whole like Rodgers conspiracy thing, like if you're interested in all that, it is not, I'm not, I'm not recommending going down the dark hole that that is on social media, but it is, if you're laying in bed sick and all, your screen time is already through the roofs and you feel like you've looked at everything else, uh, I can contest it is at least a fun time. I, and I do think the Roger saying, number one, I have a chance to be back this year. And number two, I'm going to be here for 2024 and beyond. I think was his words uh, makes you stop to going out. stop going out there to get a guy like Kirk cousins. Cause Kirk cousins is still going to be in the league for four or five years. It doesn't necessarily stop you from getting someone like Josh Dobbs which is, I think, a move maybe they should have made if they were trying to make a push for the playoffs to bring Rodgers back in the playoffs, which I think was the most likely scenario of all the you know things to happen. Maybe he wouldn't have been back this week, next week, but he could have been back in mid to late January. Um, maybe. This timeline for then maybe, Achilles is still it, April. Maybe. Like... Like it's still April. Like yeah, exactly. Well, I don't know if you heard that Kirk Cousins wants to come back for the Super Bowl, but that's another story for another time. Yeah, yeah. Um, the, the Vikings got to make the playoffs anyway. First. Um, but I do think that Kirk Cousins, that Kirk Cousins, we've got blocked by Rodgers trying to come back this season. I do not think a move for like a Josh Dobbs or if they traded for someone else who was a backup that could have just improved over Zach Wilson. Um, did that that move should not have been stopped by the fact that Rodgers wanted to come back. The only thing I'll say is that Jets offensive line is so bad that I don't even know if a healthy Aaron Rodgers could have saved their season. They probably win a few more games, 
but I don't think it's a lock that they make the playoffs, especially in how deep the, the AFC is. But I guess we'll get to wait and see that next year, and hopefully they shore that up. Yes, sir. So I think that wraps up our news. Why don't we jump into our semifinal matchups and the Week 16 NFL preview? As I mentioned, games Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, not even counting Thursday Night Football, which we're recording right before here. And there's two games on Saturday starting off 430 East, I believe it is, with the Cincinnati Bengals and Pittsburgh Steelers. Anybody out there who has Jamar Chase, you saw he left the game early last week with a separated shoulder. He is out this week, and he is very questionable for next week. Um, so if you do get to your championship game, he still might not even be back then, but we're talking week 16, big blow for him, but big burst for T Higgins. I, he, he performed last week and I think that's a good sign. And we got to see that. So, um, I do like T Higgins in this matchup. Uh, if you've made it this far without playing T Higgins and you have some better options, like I'm not saying force him in your lineup. I know he's been playing really good, but it is still Jake Browning. They still have Joe Mixon that they're going to try to run the ball through. The Steelers' defense is still pretty good. Divisional matchup, the over-under is still just set at 38, so it could be a low-scoring game. Uh, so I don't think the it's a force T. Higgins, but if you have him and you need him as a flex or a wide receiver too, I definitely like him this week. What are your thoughts on cutting Jamar Chase? Like if you're desperate to need somebody, like is because the play like it's championships. Like, would you cut him, or is he still? Because even if he's back next week, it's still like only one week move from separated shoulder. Probably not a hundred percent. Do you trust that in the championship game? I know that's like this is like a very probably dire situation that you can't find one yeah. player to cut, but Jamar Chase. But just wanted to get your thoughts there. I'm trying to hold him at all costs because I do think even though it is one week out of a separated shoulder, like Jamar Chase is that guy that would still come out there and put up two touchdowns in week 17 um, if the Bengals needed him and he does come back from injury. The one situation where I would say you can cut Jamar Chase is if there's really you really do have a deep bench or whatever, and there's a reason to not cut anybody else. You get to Monday night and you have a really bad injury problem and you have to add somebody to give you a chance to win, like you don't have a game locked up, like it had to be super dire like that for me. Um, but I would I find it hard to believe you don't have somebody else to cut that isn't Jamar Chase because Chase could be an asset in the final week. Yeah, and and this is also a good point to if you're not playing, if I, I don't like to say if you're not playing for anything because I know a lot of leagues try to keep it competitive. Sometimes there's a a punishment for last play. Sometimes it determines draft order for next year. Like you want to keep competitive even if you're in the losing bracket but if you have jamar chase and you're in the losing bracket definitely don't cut him and let one of those teams pick him up to to sway the potential championship uh yeah. so it is a super uh you know niche reason i'm not saying it's impossible to if you don't have to cut him or if you're in one of the leagues that have a really narrow bench and you have a bunch of guys that are hurt and because he's less likely to play next week than everybody else. Okay, we get it. But if you're in a traditional league, I don't think I would cut him just yet. But on the Steelers side, uh, th there is a big injury. That is Kenny Pickett is out. Uh, it is not going to be Mitch Trubisky starting this week. It is going to be Mason Rudolph is going to start on Christmas weekend, which is fun. What fit? How fitting, right? How fitting. Did you see the, uh, the clip that went kind of viral of George Pickens not blocking on the uh, Jalen Warren run? I think it was Jalen Warren. No. It was Najee Harris. I did not see that. Uh, yeah, it kind of went a little viral for, and he's been called out a little bit this week for his lack of effort. So maybe there will be a little bit of extra energy by Pickett, or maybe he'll get a little bit of a punishment because uh, of his lack of effort, so to speak. Then, I, sorry, I, I'm, I'm we're going all over tangents. We're already half an hour into this episode. I, we're on the first game. I don't even care. Uh, <laughs> What was your thoughts on the one DeMonte Casey hit and two the he suspended for three games? Um, well, they I initially was worse. They said, like, even if the Steelers make the playoffs, you're not playing. Like, you're not playing until 2024. Um, so they did kind of knock it down to just being three games. Um I 
do know it's a multiple offense kind of situation. There's a couple of guys in the league that have just been kind of throwing caution to the wind and being like, I don't care. I'm still going to go ahead, lead with the helmet, put players at risk. I think that the NFL has to make a big effort to try to knock those things out. I think if you remember earlier in the season, Kareem Jackson was in a very similar situation, safety for the Broncos. I believe he was suspended for the rest of the regular season. I could be wrong because I know there was an appeal in there or whatever, but um, the NFL has put a pretty clear line that if you're going to be a repeat offender of something like this, that is a player safety rule about concussions specifically, you're going to get punished heavily. Um, so I'm actually surprised that they knocked it down to what is essentially three games. It sounds worse when they say rest of regular season, but there's not much left. Um, I think it's a good move because of the way the NFL is trying to cover themselves and reduce concussions. And these guys know what the rules are in front of them. And he's just not, he just repeat offender. Could I ask you a controversial question? Hit me. Should it have been flagged? <laughs> like what is, the, what is he supposed? Oh, and the only reason I asked this is because of Michael Pittman's dive. Like, I do think it was a penalty. Like he has to find a way to get his head out of there. Like I'm not, disagreeing that mm-hmm. but it's almost it's like does he instead of lunging at Pittman does he need to be like lunging and put his hands out for the ball like what is because and it's so bang bang and it was just such a it's like well like mm-hmm. does he, he can't you don't ever just want to like let the guy catch it but because he's diving and already in such a compromised position it, it was definitely a, a one that, and I saw some stuff on Twitter too it was like that is such a hard one Obviously, repeat offender, like vicious hit. Like, I get why this is such a game. And I'm not saying it shouldn't have been flagged, um, but it just goes to show on how hard it is to play defense, I guess is the best way to put it. It's true. Um, and we can go into a deeper, even deeper thing after this with the whole hip drop tackle thing that they're trying to get rid of to, you know, it's causing a lot of ACL and ankle injuries. But like, um, when it comes to this, I think you just have to, as a player, learn how to lead with the shoulder instead of the head. Like in that case, it's super tough because of the dive and how close he is to the ground and how far you have to lunge to. But like, tell me how many situations that you can think of on the top of your head that the play would be broken up where the player leads with his helmet and wouldn't be broken up where it leads with his shoulder. I think there's a good chance that regardless of what happens on that play, the outcome's the same, whether he jumps in with a shoulder first and keeps himself higher or jumps in with the head and hits him helmet to helmet. Like I... I don't see how it could have been a difference in how it was defended, but it's a much safer play. And it's a lot of players have adjusted to it and it is taking a lot of big hits out of the game, which I mean, for all of us that go back on YouTube and watch those big hits compilations back in the early two thousands, it's a little disappointing, but a lot of the outcomes of the plays are the same regardless. It's just players having to adjust how they're attacking an offensive player instead of leading with the helmet, leading with the shoulder. All right. I appreciate your input uh we have one more game on saturday now this is a peacock exclusive game so make sure right before christmas you sign up for yet another free trial uh hashtag not a sponsor but it definitely could be i mean i'm, I'm going to take advantage of this free trial there's some stuff on peacock i want to watch it's not just the football game but it is the bills chargers and when they picked this game they were definitely expecting a lot more than what they're going to get for this peacock exclusive and you might need it for two months two months because i think peacock also has an exclusive playoff game which is the weirdest thing but th- we'll talk about that later that's a little rough uh, and then uh chargers plus 12 and a half uh obviously justin herbert has already been ruled out now keenan allen is out uh josh palmer had an okay day last week once they finally got going uh with after th- 63 to 21 victory that was a rough rough game (laughs) last thursday night excuse me uh but is there any chargers you're going to start this week uh austin eckler i think you have to keep rolling with him because of the high upside uh the chargers have to simplify the offense without um justin herbert at quarterback hopefully it works out better for him than it did last week and it worries me that you're obviously facing the bills and that's very tough competition. But like, um, I think you have to keep rolling with Eckler. There's not a lot of situations in a redraft where I feel like you'd have, you should have to play Josh Palmer, but he's one of my favorite cheap DFS options out there um, because I do think being wide receiver one there 
gives him some upside, but uh, there's not really much to like on the Chargers side anymore. It's amazing how quickly that team has fallen. Yeah, and Os Eckler, he only has one game over seven points since uh, week 11, so the last five weeks. So that's definitely a touchy subject, but I, I get why you say play him. They're probably going to be down behind. Hopefully he gets some work in the past game, and you're just praying for a touchdown. And there's a lot of running back injuries too. So uh, I'm going to ask you a fun sit-start here in the next matchup, but I'm going to save it for you so you, you might be able to start thinking about what I'm talking about. On the Bills side, though, uh, I think James Cook, after that performance, you're going to play him. I know he was dealing with a little bit of an illness, but he was back at practice. Josh Allen is a no-brainer. Stephon Diggs is a no-brainer. But what about Dalton Kincaid? He seemed like a guy in the middle of the season that was starting to look like a reliable starting tight end in fantasy. He wasn't the elite of the elite, but he was – you know, putting up consistent points. Uh, but over the last couple of weeks, he has a zero, a 2.1, a 3.8, and a 4.6. So, like, tight ends are already incredibly tough, but the last five weeks have been, or I guess, yeah, that's four weeks for him. Not great. Are you still rolling them out there this week because it's the Chargers in a plug matchup? Or would you rather play a guy like Pat Fryermuth in the earlier game? Do you have any uh, dramatic uh, speech music to go in here? No, I'll just I'll just do the zoom. No, I should say like heart to heart kind of thing. I'll just zoom. I'm speaking to the fantasy gods because I want to know why we cannot have too many good tight ends at the same time. Like we have Jameer Gibbs. I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't know what this is. But I can't <laughs> that really threw me off. I didn't you'd actually have anything, and that's not what I was going for, but it's okay. Um, <laughs> um, even when we have Travis Kelsey, who is this dominant force, then we have David and Joku come in, and Travis Kelsey falls off the map. Dalton Kincaid was doing fantastic, and then all of a sudden he fell back off once. Um, <laughs> I am not remembering this Lions tight end. Sam Laporta. Thank you. Why did I, I? I said Jameer Gibbs. I'm totally. I'm blowing it here. Um, we're gonna go back to. It, it was the music. Oh, that's 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 not it. Hi. Hey, hey this is why I don't hit the buttons. Um, <laughs> we had Sam Laporta. Sam Laporta starts to fall off. Dalton Kincaid's the new Sam Laporta. Dalton Kincaid falls back off, and Sam Laporta puts up all these points again. Like, it's like we can't have all of them at the same time. This is why people want to get rid of the tight end position in fantasy football, because we only have so many of them. And then even when you think, oh, we actually have a solid group of seven, eight tight ends now, it's like it's just so many waves and it's always only three, four at a time that are good. With that being said, there's only three, four at a time that are good. So you're still playing Dalton Kincaid and hoping you get a rebound. Even over Pat Frymuth in the earlier game? Man, Pat Frymuth had one week. I wish Pat Fryermuth has been doing better. He didn't. He's had three pretty rough weeks as well. So he had one week, up, and that's the, when the Steelers' offense finally fired Matt Canada, and we're like, "This is the new team." No, it's it was a fluke, unfortunately. Yeah, double check to make sure Trey McBride's not owned. I, he's owned a lot of leagues, but mm -hmm. he's the sneaky guy that's been because uh, he's on the Cardinals. He's been, you know. A little bit of an afterthought, but uh, over 10 points the last two weeks. Uh, oh, that's an even in standard scoring. So switch that over to nine the week before, then a little bit of a downward film seven, but 17. So he's been a little bit more consistent uh, as an option there. So anything else for the Saturday games? We ready to move on to one, one o'clock. Let's move on to Sunday and see what this fun question Cody has and move into the Detroit Lions and the Minnesota Vikings. I'm going to just take it right off the top. So Alexander Madison is a DNP looking like he's mm -hmm. not going to play. Uh, Ty Chandler had over 20 fantasy points last week. Would you play Ty Chandler over Austin Eckler? I would. Now, the Lions um, are the number one team against running backs. 
in fantasy football. And I'm actually going to go back and uh, give props for this one to Kempe, who was on last week, um, because he was trying to talk to me a couple of situations where, like, he has Ty Chandler. Would you start him over X or Y? The Lions are the number one team against running backs. But I feel I believe if you look over the last four weeks or so, they are actually middle of the pack or positive against running backs like this was a lot of back to the beginning of the season they were really good and they have not been that good in recent weeks against running backs so if you look at it that way ty chandler is on fire right now could be a lead back again if madison doesn't go and this lions team you should probably treat as more of a neutral matchup right now so i like it a lot I'm also putting up the candidacy for Ty Chandler as this year's Jarek McKinnon now that Keaton Mitchell is out, which is unfortunate. Um, so we're going to pass that torch over there. All right. I like I just picked up Ty Chandler in the week somehow and probably going to play him this week over Garrett Wilson. So that's where, where I'm at. Uh, do you like that move? I do. Okay. Um, poor Jets. Just, I mean, Give me Aaron Rodgers and sure, but uh, it's apparently not happening. <laughs> All righty. Other Vikings. Uh, so Nick Mullins looks to like he's going to get the start again. Um, so Addison and Justin Jefferson, I think you can, and Hawkinson, like this team isn't like putting up elite numbers, but I think you're like playing pretty much all the starters still in fantasy football because it does, they don't, they don't spread the ball around. It's still like, those are the guys that get the opportunities and, you just hope there's enough and maybe Justin Jefferson or Addison won't get the touchdown, which will be unfortunate, but those are the, the kind of things we have to live with in, in fantasy. And then speaking of, you know, which guy do you play? Uh, the Lions side, David Montgomery versus Tamir Gibbs, that goes back and forth each week on who gets the touchdown. And I think both are still in the lineup for, for that week. And then obviously Amra and Sam Florida are there as well. It's on the road though. You like Jared Goff as a streamer? Yeah, um, I still think there's probably not 10 guys I would like more than him, so. All righty. To, to save a little time, let's uh, let's pick up the pace just a little bit with these next three matchups because they're interesting, but I think it's pretty straightforward what they're going to do. The first one is the Seattle Seahawks coming off a big Monday night victory. So short week, West Coast team coming east at 1 o'clock. Ooh. Titans plus three and a hot plus three and a half. Give me the Titans in, in that matchup if you're picking a spread there. And I've been terrible picking the Titans all season. So that's what I'm gonna say. Speaking of that, I gotta make my picks for my picks league before this. Uh, yeah, you better go do that now while I talk a little bit. I and guess then, I can uh, kind of jump yeah. in if you need me to. Jump in with this matchup real quick. Um, big thing with the Titans is uh Will Levis not participating in practice. It's gonna be Ryan Tannehill back again at quarterback. Not exactly what you love to see, but there's not really a ton that you're playing on the Titan side of the ball. If you survived that Derrick Henry performance last week, we sit here and hope for some snow in Vermont this week. It was a little bit too warm last week, apparently. Um, but he is probably the only guy that you're really worried about going. You could play DeAndre Hopkins, but I've liked DeAndre Hopkins a lot more with Will Levis in there. So he's probably going to go from that borderline flex back to I'm going to try to find another guy this week. Seahawks side of the ball. Um, the resurgence of Ken Walker, he looked fantastic now that he's getting further away from that oblique injury. So I think he's someone that can go back in your lineup um, and you're playing DK Metcalf. I think that about wraps it up for that one. I also do like the Titans in this one, even with Tannehill back in, as long as he's not going to be a turnover machine. I think that uh, the Seahawks have a chance to have a little bit of a downer in this one. Yeah, at least give me the three and a half points like. Seahawks yeah. by a field goal sounds right. So because I get that extra half, I I do like that one. But I, I agree with everything you said there. So we can move on to another matchup that is a little questionable, which is the Cleveland Browns going to the Houston Texans. Now, the Houston Texans are two and a half point underdogs, which some people might find surprising until they remember that C.J. Stroud is still not practicing after suffering a concussion. Uh, does not look like he's going to play this week, which means it'll be uh, not Davis Case Mills. Case Keenum. Case Keenum, who got the win against Tennessee last week in that overtime victory. Uh, so Case Keenum versus Joe Flacco. So welcome back to 2015. <laughs> Was Case Keenum a starter that long ago? Is it that long? 
I feel like I'll look it up, but I feel like that oh has to be. He was the guy that replaced Peyton Manning or one of those guys, I guess, wasn't he? Um, anyway, this one, yeah, it seems like a super intriguing matchup. And it, it honestly, surprisingly, is basically a playoff game in the AFC as these two teams are both fighting for one of those last few wild card spots, especially with teams like the Bengals coming back up on them and the Steelers still hanging around. Um, and then you see that they're starting Joe Flacco and Case Keenum. It's a little bit tough. When it comes to the fantasy side of things, Jerome Ford might be a play. He's kind of been a borderline guy, um, not going, giving you blowout numbers, but he's doing okay. Um, I'm still not a fan of playing Amari Cooper. The big guy in this game to me is David Njoku. We're hoping that he can keep building off of that huge 160 yard game last week as Joe Flacco seems to love to throw the ball to him. Um, and then, Text inside of the ball. Noah Brown could be a guy that can stay in your lineup. Dalton Schultz potentially. Um, and then out of the running backs, I think Devin Singletary is the better option. Yeah, I'm with you. And then just to recap, so Case Keenum did play six games uh, for the St. Louis Rams in 2015. Uh, oh, uh, he was then, in, the, in the flip with Nick Foles, I believe, at that point. And then he played 10 games in 2016 for the Rams. But his then 15 games for the Vikings in 2017, part of the uh, the miracle, the Minneapolis miracle. He's the one that threw the pass to Stephon Diggs. And then 16 games for Denver. And then 10 games for Washington in 2019. So he's actually, he's started his career in 2013. So he's a 10 year vet. Uh, the more you know about Case That's Keenum. Crazy. That, that he's has had been some decent your... moments if you look at it there. Um, not bad for sure for sure uh you good to move on to the next matchup i think covered everything pretty nicely yeah please okay this one is there gonna be offense in this game does offense exist over under 37 people haven't figured out this is that's high commanders jets under (laughs) uh zach wilson dmp with a concussion brian robinson dmp are we playing anybody in this matchup uh, if Brian Robinson comes back, you are. I don't even love playing Terry McLaurin uh, I mean, because we just week. saw their quarterback get benched. <laughs> yeah. I, have they even said it's going to be Sam Howell or Jacoby Brissett? I don't think they've said. I'm assuming we're going to say it's Sam Howell um, because there's not an injury problem or anything. And I haven't heard any news, which means you should probably you're probably going to go with the guy you have been. Um, yeah, but I don't like playing Terry McLaurin because of that. Um, I don't, I, I guess you could play Antonio Gibson, but this Jets defense is so good that I, I he hasn't been impressive enough for me when I do that Jets side of the ball. I'm not convinced they're going to get past the 50. <laughs> you could play <laughs> Brees Hall. We've seen Brees Hall in the mix emotions that have been with him. He puts up 21 week and then he puts up two the next three. Uh, maybe he's due for a big game, but I don't, I don't want to know if I, I don't know if I want to trust it. So yeah, no, I'm, if I'm can help it, I'm playing nobody. The guys who you could play if you're desperate would be Brees Hall. And then on the other side, if Brian Robinson goes, but it's not leaning that way. Cool. I just sent a text to my insider and we'll find out who the starter is coming up in a little bit, but we don't need to spend time waiting for that response. So we can talk about Colts Falcons. This is Colts. slightly more intriguing. Two and a half point underdogs. What? I'm I'm gonna oh how is can you starting? text our uh, oh okay. I was gonna say, could you text our other insider and be like, what's up with this? <laughs> All right, let me just double check that I didn't mistype that because that one feels like Cody, you need you mistyped. Well, so. it's also Taylor Heineke starting for the Falcons. Uh speaking yep, of it is two and a half commanders, quarterbacks. That feels wrong, but I feel like when you see lines like this. They're normally right. Like it makes you look and be like, what does that even mean? And now the Falcons are going to win and cover. Um, I feel like that's how it typically goes. Um, potential letdown for the Colts, which is weird because Wednesday, Zach Moss, DNP, Jonathan Taylor, full participant. Taylor expected to be back and good to go. Huge for your fantasy teams if you got this far with him riding along. Michael Pittman, limited participant. He is expected to clear concussion protocol and go. So that's another positive sign. Like, I, everything's lining up for the Colts. I, I don't understand how they're underdogs. 
Yeah, I I don't get it. Like the Colts, the Falcons just lost to Panthers. Yep. They're switching quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Now I get they're at home, but they're playing the Colts or who are in the thick, the AFC championship or not the championship, but the AFC playoffs. They're like, tied Ed with John- that Browns and Texans team that are like in that five, six, seven, eight, nine like spot. Yeah, I, that one is when I saw that, I wanted to make sure I brought it up and then I brought it up and I did not question myself. And I'm actually going to check one more time. Uh, and these odds are courtesy of of DraftKings over there. So not a sponsor, yep. but should be should be for sure. Plus two point five for the Colts. That's crazy. That's crazy. Um take the Falcons because like I said, a lot of times when there's a weird line like that in Vegas, they know something we don't know. Uh Taylor Haneke magic coming to a dome near you, Atlanta. Apparently. Yeah, but I mean and even the they're they're you know Pittman after that vicious hit limited participant on Wednesday, so he's trending in the right direction to play. I do believe he went to full on Thursday, but I don't know if we have an official report. I just believe yeah, I, I saw an insider report on that one. And then Taylor was full participant on Wednesday, and I believe Thursday. But again, the I don't know why they couldn't post the official report yet, but they didn't. Uh, now Zach Moss was DNP on Wednesday, so it looks like Taylor should be good to go. Zach Moss might not be. Yeah, this line is definitely a little bit. Uh, confusing but we'll have to to wait and see i don't think i touched too much on the falcon side of the ball for fantasy um b john is another guy who's kind of been up and down but he's been more consistent than guys like Brees hall so you can keep him in your lineup Except last week um yeah last week right. was rough the, the problem is is arthur smith's they have three running backs and they s- will use all three that yeah. is the 100 percent the problem with the falcons is, I mean, Bijan's still running back twelve on the season, uh. So, he maybe thirteen half point PPR, uh, actually probably higher in half point PPR. But he got negative points this week. So if you have, you probably didn't win. Uh, he only had negative point six on, you know, eleven yards. But he obviously had the fumble. Uh, so that was a rough week. But he had fourteen the week before, twenty four just four weeks ago. So I think you can still play Bijan. But just go into it, which by this time of the season, you realize there's going to be some weeks where, for some reason, Cordero Patterson gets all the red zone work. And it's going to make you want to pull your hair out. And that's just the way it's going to go. It's the same reason why Johnny Smith gets more targets than Cal Pitts. It doesn't make sense, but <laughs> they were until last week fighting for the number one spot in the NFC South. So they're at least winning it their division until of last week agreed um so now we can move on to one last one o'clock game and it is the green bay packers down in carolina facing the panthers panthers underdogs by five 37 and a half over under the packers looking for a rebound they do not have Jaden reed and christian watson in practice on thursday Limited participants for A.J. Dillon, Aaron Jones, and Dontavian Wicks. Cody, what is your take on this one? This team better not ruin my Christmas Eve. <laughs> this team. They're playing the worst so, team in the league. I was so prepared to lose on Thanksgiving. I had a great Thanksgiving. They shocked the world. What do they do? They follow that up with a Monday night, or not a Monday night, a Sunday night victory against the Kansas City Chiefs. We were sitting in the seventh seed. We had five winnable games, and when the Packers looked like they were going to make the playoffs year one, Jordan Love. And what do they do? They lose to Tommy DeVito, and then they lose to – they make Baker Mayfield have a perfect passer rating <laughs> in a game. He went for his career high in yardage in – three quarters they've given up back-to-back nfc offensive players of the week if bryce young the panthers have only like haven't scored over 21 points in like seven weeks or something like crazy like that bryce young hasn't thrown a touchdown pass in six weeks i think it is like if this panthers team comes out here and puts up points on this packers team 
I might not be on the podcast anymore because I will be in a deep depression. Like it will not be good. And, but I'm worried because of all the injuries you mentioned that the Packers are going to, you know, maybe struggle a little bit on offense. Uh, Reed, I think has a better chance to play than Watson, uh, but he banged up his toe last week. He has gone all with this chest injury. He has not practiced, not practiced, not practiced, played trying to just mm-hmm. rest his chest. But there was a toe added to it, which concerns me. Watts is the hamstring. Aaron Jones would probably be my favorite play out of the Packers this week. Uh, but that's just because I don't think A.J. Dillon is going to go because uh, he broke his thumb. I think they're going to give him another week. Uh, and it's just a it's a rough time for us Packers fans, which as Packers fans, I know that sounds incredibly uh, short-sighted. And I get that. And I acknowledge that. So if you guys are, you know, fans of the Browns or the Bears or people that haven't had good teams out there, you know, the Lions before last year or this year, like, I get it. Stop talking, Cody. It's fine if the Packers don't make the playoffs. It'll be okay. Hard knocks will be electric. But <laughs> what I the I Jordan Love has been playing really well. I think he's had like a hundred plus passer rating in five of the last seven weeks or something like that. Uh, and I think he'll be good this week, but with the lack of pass catchers that might be available to him, I am concerned about playing him with the low over under. So there's not a ton of Packers. I like playing and there's not a ton of Panthers. I like playing. There's actually probably not I, a single Panther. I like playing. Well, the Chuba Hubbard. Chuba Hubbard is the one guy I was going to say, and he's not someone that you like you find a reason to get in your lineup. But I mean, honestly, Last four weeks, 17, 22, 10, 11, solid. Packers defense, like you say, is not fantastic against the run. So he would be the one guy on that side. (laughs) Packers side, I like Aaron Jones. Jaden Reed is a good shot if he does go, but that injury addition on the report is concerning. And if the Packers do win this game, they have Minnesota next week, which could be a playoff game for them, and they still have a chance to make it in the playoffs. So do not lose hope yet, Cody. Yeah, I've seen the... If they win out, they have a 95% chance to make the playoffs. So I, I've seen that. But it just... Last, and then the game after that is Bears. Week. It's not like it's a gauntlet of a schedule. Right. And and I get that. But last week was like... Last week, because of how poor the defense played, and I'm sure there's a lot of fans that have gone through this. Uh, you as an Eagles fan, I mean, they're on a three-game losing streak. You just went through the change at the defensive coordinator. Like, you've seen your defense not play very well. Like that game felt more like spirit breaking team falling apart loss than just, Hey, we had a bad week. And it was like, okay, this run that we thought we were going to go on might not actually happen. And there might be a deeper issue here. There was some tweets that were sent out. There was some off ball comment, odd comments, like just like the buzz around the, the Packers isn't good right now. Uh, and you know, one win can change all of that. I, I acknowledge that too. Uh, but that Panthers lost five might be a little nice. Yes. I about that. Um, I think that can wrap up the one o'clock window, four o'clock window on Sunday has a whole three games. Um, and I, two of them could be interesting in two different ways. And then this one, I guess all three are interesting. This one. So Jacksonville Jaguars, Tampa Bay Buccaneers, uh, Jaguars on a skid that is super concerning as they went from a lock in their division to now being tied with both the Colts and the Texans. They're going to be without Trevor Lawrence this week in all likelihood. And the Bucks are on a rally right now. I'm not exactly sure what their win streak is. I want to say it's three or four. Um, and they're at home and favorites. This, if you told me this four weeks ago, I'd have called you crazy. Um, but Baker Mayfield revenge tour that has been pushed off for what three years now is officially real and it's it's rolling. All righty. And just to so the Bucks are on a three game win streak, uh, as you mentioned, after a little bit of a slide after beating the Packers last week, the Falcons the week before, and the Panthers the week before that. So this Jags team. Uh, without Trevor Lawrence is going, we're assuming that because he's DNP on Thursday with the concussion plus the ankle injury. So not looking good for, for him. And 
it is blanking. Who is the backup for the Jacksonville Jaguars? Off the top of my head, I cannot think of his name. That's George, a great question, Cody. Can't think of either. Uh, he was literally just in a game on Monday night, like what, three weeks ago, two weeks ago? Yeah. The Jake Browning versus that guy. The Jake Browning versus that guy game. As we really, I forgot how to spell the name Jaguar. It's CJ Bethard. How exciting. That's why we forget. It's <laughs> CJ Bethard. I, I, the name that I have to now Google something. Can you, you can talk about this game and I'll, the, uh, um, sorry for thinking. All right. This. No, it's fine. Uh, so CJ Bethard there. I still don't think that it hurts Calvin Ridley much at all. He's been the, cardiac of you know he's gonna put up 20 points or is he gonna put up two um if you got this far with him he's one of those guys you gotta kind of roll with he's like the derrick henry um in this situation travis Etienne had a bit of a down week but they might rely on the run game more if they do have a backup quarterback in there bucks defense good against the run but i think Etienne's one of those guys that can stay in your lineup anyway um you what are you smirking about cody no so what i was smirking about was the whole time we were thinking of the Jaguars quarterback. I couldn't think of his name, but the name that kept coming to mind was Jake Rudock. And I'm like, that's not it. I 100% know that's not it. I'm like, who is nine... <laughs> Okay. So I Googled it because I'm like, I'm pretty sure he, that was a quarterback. So uh, he was a quarterback, Jake Rudock. Uh, it looks like he played three games for the Lions in 2017. Why he, <laughs> former Michigan quarterback, not sure why I was thinking he was one still in the league why that name popped into my mind uh but if you ever just are in the car with your your boys or or your lady friends and you're just going around naming old players dropping them the jake rudock and everyone be like bro you know your stuff that makes you look super impressive there like if you asked me to name a lions quarterback that no one cared about that was completely irrelevant i would have said like david blau i don't even know who jake rudock is like dang <laughs> Yeah, he uh, he was the starting quarterback for Iowa in 2013 and 14, then 15 in Michigan. And he was drafted in the sixth round, the 2016 NFL draft by the Detroit Lions, according to the most reliable source on the internet, Wikipedia. Thank you, Wikipedia, for being around and helping us so many times in life. Buccaneer side of the ball, Mike Evans is a lock, could play Kate Otten, Rashad White is a lock he has been fantastic yeah, he's more of a lock um, than e evans is but evans is still a lock. he is yes and potential stream opportunity for baker mayfield because it is actually a green matchup would you play chris godman after his big week i'm not quite chasing points there unless you're desperate for a second flex or something chris godman or t higgins give me t all righty let's talk about the next matchup it's a little bit more exciting uh, in yeah, a way, this one's intriguing because they're both bad. This is going to be that game that doesn't mean much of anything, but is a very good football game. Okay, I can see that. Uh, and we're talking about the Cardinals and the Bears. Uh, the Cardinals are four point underdogs. Uh, they're not going to most likely have Hollywood Brown as he is DMP again. I believe your boy Greg Dorch is also DMP, so that one is Darn. tough to watch. Uh, Cole Komet is limited, so that's someone we'll keep an eye on as we progress throughout the week. Uh, but I think both quarterbacks are in play. Fields and mm -hmm. Murray can be in play this week. Uh, James Conner is definitely in the lineup this week. I like that one. Um, DJ Moore, he's a lock as well. He's been good enough. Yep. And uh, this Bears team, like, they're not very good, but, like, I think they're on the in the hunt graphic because of how bad the NFC is as well. So kind of a fun uh, situation for the, the Bears to be in. Uh, and they're going to have a close eye on the Packers-Panthers game, not just so that they can pass the Packers, but if the Packers were to – if the Panthers win, that would mean they're going to lose the number one overall pick because the Panthers only one game – uh, behind the or one game up on the number one overall pick after their win over the Falcons, so that's something to pay attention to as well. Bears watching both top five picks slowly slip out of their grasp, apparently. 
Um, I don't think you mentioned the tight ends. Cole Komet's in the bucket, and Trey McBride has been one of the more consistent tight ends, so he's a lock in your lineup. And the guy that Cody said earlier, if you happen to see him sneaking through on that waiver wire, go ahead and add him, especially if you're not somebody who has one of those lock tight ends. Could be a asset in the fantasy playoffs here. For sure, and if you're like, guys, Chad McBride has been on a roster since week seven. Okay, good. That just means you're in a good elite that people know what they're doing. It's not. But you say that, and I actually, in one of the leagues, I want to say it was the league that you and I are both in, one of our lower leagues, he was on the waiver wire as of two weeks ago, as well as Dalton Kincaid, as well as Dallas Goddard. People were making desperation moves at tight end for a while. This is true. So that's why we're breaking it up. Yep. But the uh, the game of the week, at least on Sunday, yep. uh, is the 4 o'clock, the 425 game. Cowboys, Dolphins. Dolphins are our one-point favorites after the Cowboys got uh, a good old beat down against the Buffalo <laughs> Bills. They're on the road again. Uh, should be a fun matchup. Now, Raheem Moster is DNP uh, for two consecutive days. Devon A chain went DNP to limited. And the name you're probably looking forward to the most is Tyreek Kill went DNP to limited as well. So he is trending in the right direction. And uh, this is where you don't need to hesitate. If he is going to play, you're still going to play Tyreek Hill. There is a no situation. An active Tyreek Hill needs to be on your bench in fantasy football. Yes, that's 100% true, and it is trending that Tyreek Hill plays. Sorry, I was trying to look back um, because I think that there is a little bit of a pattern coming out, but it doesn't look like a pattern because of how many consecutive home games they played. There's a little bit of a home road disparity for someone named Dak, Dak Prescott, and I guess the Cowboys in general. Um it hasn't been super aggressive. I mean, that Buffalo game really kind of helps where he only got six points. His three home games before that, of course, you have a three-game homestand. That's not usual in the NFL. 17.9, 28-32. Away game against Carolina, which is a green matchup. He only got 16.16. Home game against the Giants, 37. The only away game I'm seeing on here where he really blew it away since the bye was the Eagles game. He put up 28. Um, so again, small sample size. We're looking at the fact that it's what three away games we're looking at, but there is a little bit of a home road disparity. And I have both him and Tua in a specific league that you talk about every week. And I want to ask you a set my lineup question. Are you going Dak away or are you going Tua? I'm going Tua if Tyreek plays. Okay. If Tyreek doesn't play, I go Dak over Tua. I think that's a fair assessment. Um, because that offense still did look fantastic after they were able to game plan to not have Tyreek last week, but they are a much better offense with Tyreek in there. Yeah, and I hope Tyreek does play, and I hope this game hits the over 50 points that it set up. We've seen a lot of thirty mid-30s. This game getting 50, I'd love to see a good classic shootout, uh, and maybe that's I'll just then end on that game and pretend Sunday night the ball doesn't exist. Yeah, I mean, I feel like you're doing so many things on Christmas Eve anyway that like that night game is a little bit tough. Um, Especially but you're normally still with Broncos. family for dinner when it's Cowboys Dolphins. You like kind of fill your stomach. You sit down on the couch. You watch the rest of that game and then you kind of disperse. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I <clears throat> that's the gift on Christmas Eve we want to open, but not this Patriots Broncos Sunday night game. Patriots seven point underdogs. <clears throat> Yeah. And uh, Ramondre Stevenson is DNB again. So the guy I liked for his playoff stretch, not looking you very good. Could, <laughs> you could insert Zeke and kind of hope there. He's been okay. Um, I mean, really good game that first game in for Ramondre. Hasn't been as good since, but I mean, somebody that has some potential there. I'm not touching anyone else on the Patriots unless you're like a Hail Mary Hunter Henry out of the bucket kind of situation because, you know, he's either going to score two touchdowns or he's going to throw up a zero. That's just how Hunter Henry rolls. Broncos side of the ball has a couple of other better options. Cortland Sutton's still been fairly solid flex option for you. Um, it stinks their running backs haven't been as good as they were in the past. I've still seen some people starting Javante Williams. He's been average, mediocre. 
Um, so not an automatic bench, but not someone I'm forcing in the lineup. Uh, you could play Russell Wilson, but it's not a great matchup there either. So the 34 over under kind of tells you how you should limit your players. And I think that's a pretty accurate number. I agree there. Why don't we get into some more holiday spirit, though, and talk about the th not one, not two, three games on Monday football to celebrate the holidays. And thankfully, they are not all at the same time. Let's please never do yes. same time Monday night again. <laughs> now, we got a full triple header slate. One o'clock East is probably the worst. Then eh, maybe it's not the worst game in the group. It depends on uh, what team we have show up in the second game. Las Vegas Raiders, Kansas City Chiefs, divisional game there with the Raiders as 10 point underdogs. Um, but we'll see how that one goes with this Chiefs offense not being quite as high flying as they have been. Division games can be a little bit tricky. Kadarius Tony did not participate in practice. I consider that a victory for the Chiefs. Travis Kelsey is a full go. <laughs> I okay. Slight tangent to Kadarius Tony. Man, you make a great play one out of every 10 times you are targeted to touch the ball. The other nine, I feel like you don't know how to football. I mean, this could be me not watching a lot of Chiefs football, but like this guy is got to be the most frustrating player because he has all the upside, all the athleticism, and just either has the worst hands or very poor football IQ. I don't understand. So I didn't put him. We normally we keep it to like people that we would play in fantasy, like in the injury lineups, like the names that and no one's playing Kadarius Tony. I literally put him on here to remind me to ask you, did you see where he like had the ball bounce off of his hands right to a defender again for an interception in the red zone? Yes, exactly. Last week against the Patriots. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the only reason he's on, on uh, yeah. the list. So, so you laughed when I said I feel like that's a victory for the Chiefs, but like you probably kind of also agree with me. Like I'd rather see Justin Watson getting targets. I'd rather see what's that gray guy getting targets that second tight end. Like I'd rather Noah. see that Noah Gray is it Noah Gray. Okay, there you go. I'd rather see those guys getting targets than Kadarius Tony, who has the ability to break a ball for a touchdown, but he's also going to hand a team an interception and line up off sides on the biggest play of the game at the same time. But you're right. That one play is so tantalizing <laughs> that like you see why they keep throwing him out there. Like yeah. he has the breakaway speed. He has the big playability. He has the shiftiness and hopefully he can finally get it together. But I don't know how many more passes uh, Patrick Mahomes is going to keep throwing them. If he let them go through their hands to other teams, but on the Raiders side of the ball, the big one is Josh Jacobs was a DNP. Now they've only practiced once. So that's the name we're going to have to monitor. Uh, he didn't go last week on the short week. Now, hopefully he goes this week with an, even an extra day of rest being the Monday game. Uh, but hopefully, if you were the Jacobs owner, you picked up Zamir White because he looked to be pretty good in relief last week. Yes, sir. I mean, I think I'm good with Raiders Chiefs now that I got my Kadarius Tony talk out. I can move us on to the 430 game on Christmas being the New York Giants and Philadelphia Eagles. Giants got Waller back last week. He got a couple of catches. He is a full participant on the injury report, so he, again, should be good to go. So got Tommy DeVito at quarterback. The biggest question about if this game is going to be good or not is what Eagles team is going to be showing up. If you get the Eagles team that ha finally plays that angry ball that they've been, you know, missing, they get back on track. This game should be a blowout. Vegas seems to think that that's the team we're going to see being giants at 13 and a half point underdogs, but it's, it's super hard to tell what Eagles team you're going to get right now. Yeah, three-game losing streak. You know who else went on a three-game losing streak and now looks unbeatable? San Francisco, San Francisco and that 49ers. That is exactly what I've been hanging my hat on as an Eagles fan these last couple of days. Because like you said when you're talking about that Packers game and their last loss, like that Monday night loss the Eagles had, it felt like a season-ending, heartbreaking kind of loss. <laughs> and then you look at it, and because the Cowboys lost, there's still a chance they win their division, a good chance they win their division with their upcoming schedule and the fact that the Cowboys have harder matchups. And like 
it's far from over and there's time for this team to get it back together. It just felt heartbreaking. Yeah. And then uh, the one injury to monitor is Devonta Smith was a DNP. We'll see if he's able to, to bounce back um, as well. And then uh, if you're doing a Christmas day DFS, it's the giants. That means play Boston Scott. Yes. 100%. Um, the memes are already going back around Boston Scott with the Santa hat on saying, I'm coming to save your season. Um, there's all kinds of, if you, if you need another Twitter wormhole to go down, I'm sure you can find plenty of, plenty of Boston Scott content coming into giants week. Um, I, I play your new normal suspects on the Eagles. It's, a, I, I feel like Deandre Swift specifically has to get going a lot more soon. Um, he still looked explosive last week. He hasn't been getting as many touches, but he did start to get more involved again that last week. And if you're going to start seeing more positive game scripts for the Eagles going against the giants and then the Cardinals, you expect them to be ahead more. That's a big boost for Deandre Swift. So if you've been kind of sitting on him playing some of these mediocre weeks, he's been having you, he might reward you going into the last two weeks of the fantasy playoffs. All righty, and I mentioned the 49ers. They're the uh, capper game to the Christmas Day slate uh, against the Baltimore Ravens, in which is a great way to end the holidays as the Ravens are five-point underdogs, but both number one seeds as the standings sit today. Now, the Ravens do have rookie wide receiver Zay Flowers as a limited participant, but outside of that, both of these teams are relatively healthy, at least. Lost Keaton Mitchell. But yeah, they did lose Keaton Mitchell, uh, but this Ravens team knows how to to deal with the loss of running backs, unfortunately. Uh, so this this was a good matchup. This is a repeat of the Super Bowl where the power went out. Hopefully the power stays on this time. And if you like other Reddit conspiracies, have you seen the Super Bowl logo? Uh, which people are saying it's 49ers Ravens this year. Uh, so game one of two. On the season for Ravens 49ers, we'll have to wait and see. There was also some kind of conspiracy that came up after that was released that they like released an alternate logo and the colors changed and it was like blue and something else. I don't know. It ends up being like a rumor that it was like the Cowboys were going to make or the Dolphins and something like that. But uh, no, if that <laughs> if that's true, it's Ravens 49ers. But the schedule makers absolutely crushed it with predicting that this Ravens 49ers game would be the perfect end cap to the holiday weekend because two number one seeds, potential Super Bowl preview. Both teams are playing their best ball of the year at this time. This is going to be a test for both of them. And I think we're going to see if the Ravens are legitimately the favorite in the AFC or if the 49ers are actually beatable. Because right now they feel like they're unbeatable. But if there's a team in the league that you can point at and be like, they're playing good enough ball right now that they could beat San Francisco. It probably has to be Baltimore right now. Yeah, and there'll be a lot of fantasy championships decided, not championships, but who advances with Christian McCaffrey, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle, Debo Samuel, Lamar Jackson, heck, Gus Edwards, Isaiah Likely. Like Isaiah Likely, Justin, yeah. Justin Tucker, uh, Brock Purdy. Like, There's a lot of reliable fantasy people that it's going to come down to that last game for a lot of matchups out there and uh, definitely looking forward to enjoying this one. Weird seeing a Ravens game with their good defense, having an over under a 47, but I think that again, that's a pretty accurate hit there. All right, Cody, I think that wraps up our every game. We have a little bit more to do here, so we'll try to pick it up. And why don't we hit some survivor picks? I actually realized I did not change my survivor pick from the last week. No, I just so. I just added it for you. Oh, you did? Yeah, I, okay. I I'll go with mine because okay. this is the one that I'm going to pick. Uh it's one of those Monday night games. I do think the Eagles bounce back against the Giants. I do think they get the victory. Uh, I do like them, but I didn't want you to pretend to be an Eagles fan and pick them. So I I took them for you. But I was nice enough to give you this team, if you so want them. 
I will take them. And it's also funny because they are facing the Chargers. It's the Buffalo Bills. But with the Chargers on a backup quarterback, you're getting late enough in the season that I think you, if you still have these powerhouse teams left, pick them. Uh, so the Bills are a great pick. The Eagles, again, great pick as long as you get, you're expecting that rebound. Um, yeah, I think that pretty much you're, you're past the being cute part of Survivor. You're going to try to pick these lock games with these top teams if you still have these top teams left. All right, I'm going to ask you one quick follow-up question since we don't have a, a third pick here. Um, these teams might have been picked already okay. because they were our house teams. So of some teams that might not have been picked, uh, whether that be the Packers or the Panthers, depending on how you think that game goes, uh, the Cardinals or the Bears or let's say the Buccaneers, of those five teams, which one do you like the best this week in Survivor? If you're looking for a team that you think would win, uh, but that would still be available or a team that no one wanted to pick, so to speak. Um, Cardinals bears. I don't know if I really want to touch that matchup just because I like the bears are favorites, but I feel like I like Arizona more. So I already kind of tells you, like, I'm not confident enough to pick a team there straight. Uh, the Buccaneers, I do like if Trevor Lawrence doesn't go. So they'd be my favorite probably of that group. Um, and it is leaning towards Lawrence not going. So I do like the Buccaneers. Who I think I think I agree with you. Uh, and don't touch the Commanders Jets. That one would be a trap, as well. Yeah, a hundred percent agree. And also, don't touch Colts Falcons because Vegas basically told you it's a trap by picking the Falcons favorites. Good point there too. One more thing, and we're spending someone else's money. Let's do it. Cha-ching. Cody had the brilliant idea of spending Tyler's money this week on Christmas day. And then he's like, but why don't we just do spreads? Which if you know me, I am like the the worst picker of spreads. (laughs) We did spreads. So it is the Monday night slate, the three Christmas day games. We're going to kind of work out together and figure out who is going to pick which game or who has the final say spreads are interesting should be a lot of fun and hopefully it could be a big uh, win for Tyler on Christmas day. Let's start with that one o'clock game real quick reminder. It is the Raiders at the chiefs. The chiefs are 10 point underdogs. Instant chiefs thought. favorites. That's what I meant. Chiefs are t- yeah. have 10 points. They, they have to win plus 10 points. Uh, seems like a lot. It the, the defense for the Raiders has actually been pretty good as of late. So I actually want to take the Raiders plus the points. And that's not just me going, oh, they scored 63 last week. The, the Chiefs. Well, yeah, because I mean, we just saw the Broncos that one time gave up 70 and then decided to how to play defense. And then so like it, it goes flip side too. like the Raiders can put up 63 and then decide to put up three again. But anyway, um, or not no, the Chiefs like the offense. Before. Yeah, but I mean, the Chiefs offense has not been great. I joked around when I said Kadarius Tony not playing as a victory for them, but like they don't have wide receivers anyway. Um, and the Raiders do have the solid defense. So I like this being a lower scoring game. I think it's easy to pick Chiefs for the win, but I do like Raiders plus 10 for the spread. All right. So we'll do Raiders plus 10 for the first pick. I have to open up the app while you talk about the second game. This is another one where I was like, you know, I don't know what Eagles team is going to show up. I do want to think that the Eagles are going to finally start to figure it out. This is the worst team that they've played against in like two and a half months or something like that. So there's always that as well. Like, are we forgetting that they've been playing the gauntlet and they are a team that's been staying in every one of those games. So Um, They should be able to outclass the Giants. And the fact that they are even coming off of a three-game losing streak, 13 and a half point favorites, makes me think that Vegas also thinks that they're going to rebound. I kind of still like taking the Eagles minus 13 and a half, despite that being such a long shot. Any reason to try to push me off of it? Uh, I feel like I feel like it's too many points, but I also feel like there is I, I like the chances of the Eagles like reestablishing themselves as the victors there. So if you want to go uh Raiders minus 13 and a half or sorry, not Raiders, <laughs> Eagles minus 13 and a half, basically saying they win by two scores against this Giants team, I'm for it. 
All right, we're going to go with that. And then this last one is extremely interesting. Especially because from this time of starting recording this to now, the odds have shifted. It is no longer plus five. It is now plus five and a half for the Baltimore Ravens. Does wow. that point do anything for you? Maybe. Um, I If you told me it shifted, I would have expected it to shift closer. Um, so if I'm trying to think about how Kempi says this, they're trying to make it more enticing for people to pick Baltimore because most of the people must be picking the 49ers regardless. But I see this being a close game. I think a lot of people are on the 49ers bandwagon like they were the team that was so close last year. They are the unstoppable force right now. And the Ravens, despite being the number one seed in the AFC, the AFC is so deep. And they haven't been one of the favorites the last few years. I think people are kind of sleeping on how good they actually are with Lamar on the field this time of year. He wasn't there the last two years. Um, Baltimore plus five and a half sounds really good. I, I want to take Baltimore plus five and a half. Let's, I was ready for you to be like, nah, I thought you were going to talk me out of Baltimore plus five and a half. But I think we take... Baltimore plus five and a half. I like this. Now, I know this has been we're definitely the year. Take, we're, we're definitely taking it. Yeah, we're going to definitely take Baltimore plus five and a half because this game should be close. Like, you're telling me that Baltimore can still lose this game by a field goal and we still cover. I like those chances because I expect this to be a close game. Um, I'm, I'm cool with that. Cool. And I said we're definitely taking it because... Uh, we only bet $5, but the little thing tells you what happens if you bet $10. If you bet $10 on this, you win a nice $69. So obviously we're <laughs> crap hitting that. One. We're only going to bet five to win 34.79. Not the biggest payout we've had uh, on this, but I think it'll be a little nice Christmas bonus if we were to come through with that one. So I like, and we were told if we lose this week, we have to donate tile money to the, spend Tyler's money fund. So let's try to hit this one. We put a lot of good analysis into this one. So let's hope that us two who are not the greatest at picking spreads, we're able to put our brains together enough. Maybe he should uh, come on and help us make some picks. If he's tired of us spending his money, that's all I'm going to say about the shout that. out. Oh, we'll see if he comes back for championship weekend, but good luck to all of you guys. It probably depends. In your fantasy if semifinals. Wins. Yeah, that's true. He's definitely going to be on if he wins. But if he's also, he's in the World Cup finals. He's gonna back on. Uh, but like, <laughs> in your fantasy playoffs, let us know uh, at the Couch Jams Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. How you guys are doing? If you need lineup advice, we are there for you in the DMs. But more importantly, for myself, George, Tyler, all of us at Couch Jams, want to wish you a happy holiday. Spend some time with some family and friends. We'll be talking to you next week.